Well, it's the day of my presentation, and I'm a nervous high school student. I never talked in public, nor to an audience, and this was my first chance to share with my peers my report from my perspective that would be really different, I think, than theirs. They knew that I was a student that carried around a Bible to class. When I had extra time, they could, they could find me probably reading my Bible. I'm sure they noticed at some point. I didn't talk about it much, but it was a far cry from engaging in a conversation that I knew would be met with religious skepticism and resistance. Never before had I had to give my testimony and what I believe. I had a difficult time that day eating my lunch. Uh, I wasn't that hungry. Uh, all I could think about was the one thing, uh, the jeers or the the potential silent separation that would take place once I opened my mouth to give my speech. Speech class offered opportunities for everyone to talk and it was my day. You know, I was a farm kid, not a preacher. Uh, I wanted to fit in like everyone else at that age, not stand out. I was really doing two things that day that I hated to do. It was time that I take a stand for what I believed in though it's, it's the one thing I know in my life at that point that I had to say something. But it's one thing in your life to be different, but to share those differences verbally to your peers uh, is incredibly difficult. I wanted to run. I just didn't want to be there. I stood at the podium with the teacher looking intently at me, if that's not intimidating enough, uh, fully knowing that she's going to hate the content of what I have to say. My religious conviction is asking me to speak and I feel like God is nudging me to stand up for what I believe. And so I wrote a speech and I nervously spoke my thoughts. I gave my presentation word for word as I had scripted. There was no ad-libbing at all. Uh, I was incredibly nervous and I'm sure that red-faced nervous kid created a very uncomfortable atmosphere for uh, my audience to endure. It had to have been a very painful speech to endure. Well, the speech is done, and I wait for what seems like days for a response following. So I grab my paper ready to sit down. And again, I was not expecting affirmation. I was going in fully expecting that I would hear uh, something like a good, good prep work. I didn't expect people to believe, but I did expect them to walk around me in silence, nervous now that I had a different belief system than they did. Christ made an impact in my life. But I hear this sound in the background as I'm about ready to sit down. And that sound is my friend Mark, who's on the front left. And he's starting a slow applause. A very slow applause. As if, hey, we got to give this guy kudos just for standing up there, period. More hands joined in the kudos, and I sat down, and I really didn't know how to handle the um, the accolades that day. Were they genuine? Um, were they something that the students really meant? Or is it just a way to, to cut the thick air of uncomfortableness? Um, I sat down, and I'm not really sure after that applause that day um, what they really thought about it, because no one ever said, good job, good preparation. In fact, the teacher stood up and said, thank you for sharing your opinion. Didn't say thank you, uh, good work, good detail, just thank you for sharing your opinion. Uh, no student ever really said to me that day that they agreed with what I had to say. Um, they went on their way really that, like any other day to the next class. I was shocked though, four years later, after giving that speech four years later, I was invited by the student government to pray for the opening prayer at my graduation ceremony. What a compliment. You know, I don't know if that speech made an impact and probably didn't make a, a strong impact on my invitation to, to be the person to pray the invocation at my graduation ceremony. But I did learn that a steady, slow, confident influence over time does make an impact in peers. They're watching you to see if you are really genuine or not. Uh, again, lesson learned. 
following God in obedience does make a difference. And so it's important for us to stand in, stand up, and stand with Jesus. Now, I'll break those thoughts down during our Sunday morning service this morning, what stand in, stand with, and stand up actually mean. But before that, I want to draw your attention to another speech made by the apostles as we look at the the time that they are teaching. You have to remember in the book of Acts, chapter 5, there's a lot of resistance that's taking place. There has been resistance against God's plan since Genesis. Uh, There have been people who resist God's plan and God's kingdom work since Genesis. And so as we look at this text, I want to pull a phrase that fascinates me uh, in this way. Think about it from this standpoint. Um, As we look in chapter 5 of the book of Acts, we find this thought. Now this is after um, incarceration because they were teaching. Uh, They've been incarcerated twice now because they were teaching the, the, the name and the words of Jesus and the fact that Jesus was raised to life. And so in the middle of all this controversy, who is this Jesus? And many people are getting saved and, and believing in Christ and following him. Uh, in all this dynamic of, of an incredible good that's taking place and an incredible horrific resistance that's taking place, I want you to hear these words. Now think, if you would, as I read these, what you think, who it think, rather, as I read these words, think about who this sounds like, okay? The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. That's an amazing thing itself. That is almost word for word what we hear the gospel writers say about Jesus. That's how they describe what Jesus was doing. And so you have these apostles who are little Jesus people walking around, so to speak. Uh, You've heard the joke of the the mini-me. And and I think it's important for us to see that, that we are little Christ's. Uh, we are uh, people who are Jesus in our world, and, and in their world, they're continuing to, with confidence, share uh, their their personal convictions. Like me in that in that classroom, personal convictions are, are not always easy to come about, and personal convictions aren't always easy to verbalize. But in this particular context, uh, we're seeing the apostles being incredibly confident to share uh, the message of Christ. So the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. We'll describe that in the Sunday morning service this morning as well. But no one else dared join them. Think about that. Think about the the people who wanted to join but didn't because they didn't want to go to jail, in essence. Uh, But notice the confidence and the steady, uh, confident influence that's taking place here. Uh, No one else joined them, even though, think about this, they were highly regarded. Uh, Verse 13, no one else dared to join them, even though they were highly regarded. That speaks of the influence of the apostles at this point. Their their lives over a period of time with Jesus, and now uh, they're standing up for for Christ uh, publicly. Uh, These are things that others are noticing. They're not joining them yet, but they're admiring their walk with Christ. And then it continues on. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. Now, this is a fascinating thought. And this also looks like Jesus. Uh, As a result, people brought their sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow would fall upon them as he passed by. Isn't it interesting here that there is now the idolization of the followers of Christ because uh, they are so close to Jesus and they're standing up for their faith and their influence is steady. Uh, Isn't it interesting that people just wanted to be near them? And and in this case, they just wanted to be near their shadow. Uh, in In that space where they were, there was an attractiveness from the apostles at this point because Uh, They were so close to Jesus. Can I encourage you today that even though uh, we face challenges in front of us, and can I just remind you, we will always face challenges as long as we are on this earth. But our steady, godly influence impacts people more than we know. 
You see, we, we only see just a fraction, less than 1% of, of the potential result that we have on people's lives. But I'm telling you, the steady, uh, the steady presence of Christ in our lives daily and the ability to stand up sometimes in front of a class and say what we believe is right according to God's Word, um, the, the steady influence of just doing and obe- uh, obeying God and doing what He asks of us is, is key. Let me encourage you today that that you may not think because of uh, isolation and, and and quarantines and and all the news that's taking place right now. You may not think you have a an influence, and you may think the church's influence is kaput. You may think it's just done, uh, but nothing, nothing will stop Christ. Nothing will stop the church's influence. But it's up to us, even in times of crisis to make sure that we're drawing close to Christ, filled with his presence, and allowing God to work through our steady influence. This is slow, steady, faithful obedience in a long direction. And it's not, it doesn't come uh, in, in one moment, but every once in a while there'll be moments that will give you a glimmer of hope that you are living a godly life. People will see it, they'll notice it. They will say something to you, not every day, but my friends, don't underestimate the influence of a Christ-like walk. It does make a difference. For me and my peers in high school, we're starting to connect again on social media and Facebook. And I have to say, I'm humbled when I hear them say that they admired a steady walk that they saw in high school. And they're looking in again to my life again, 30 plus years later and saying, you know, we're looking to see if you're still the real deal, if it really lasted. And they're making sometimes choices based upon the, the reality of God in our lives. And Christ has to be real. It's not just a routine and it's not short lived. But my, my friends, your Christ like living makes a difference in the world. It doesn't in, always involve standing up and sharing. Uh, the majority of the world are, are not called to, to be preachers. Uh, the majority of the world are not called to to use their gifts in that way. But all of us are called to be holy and to live a Christ-like life, and it will have a steady influence on people over time. And when the time comes, you will be ready to give testimony to what God has done, even if it's in the face of resistance. Church, take courage. God is using you even when you may not see it. Let me pray for you. Father, continue to allow Grace Church and the people here at the church to find the steady influence of Christ. Allow your work to be done. And I pray in the power of Jesus that in all that is said and done, that you would be glorified through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a reminder that uh, our channel that you're watching right now has been a temporary channel. I'll continue to post items like this Uh, but the services will no longer be posted on this channel. This will be more of a pastor-to-pastor, face-to-face conversation. And I'll try uh, each week to break down the content of my text that I'm going into at 10 to 45 in the service. Uh, So in a brief way, you can begin preparing your minds and your heart, working through the passages of Scripture that I'm working through as well. Uh, This is just to to aid you in that process. But our live service uh, is at Nashville Grace Church, uh, and you can search for that on YouTube. Uh, the emails that go out have a direct link to it, so you can find it easily. Uh, some of you want to watch the service on your TV, and if you have a smart TV, uh, you're able to, to, to view this, but you, you can watch YouTube on your devices as well if you're not familiar with YouTube. Again, uh, keep subscribing to this channel because this kind of content will, will be here weekly. In addition, the live service at 10.45 a.m. every Sunday will be on YouTube as well as Facebook and some other uh, potential uh, places and destinations as well. So we're trying to find every way possible to get our services to you while we face these challenges. I'm praying for you. I love you. And I miss you deeply. And I'm praying that God's word would just continue to grow you in this time. God bless you.